how you doing? I am doing good. I'm so happy to be back with another episode of the Trigger Day podcast. And yes. today I'm going to dive right in with our quote of the week. A good friend is a connection to life, a tie to the past, a road to the future, the key to sanity in a totally insane world. And that is from Lois Wise. And y'all know how we feel about friendship on this show by now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for me, that resonated so, so deeply because um, I have been so blessed with good friends. Yeah. And my friends are like my sisters to me. So um, I am grateful and I feel honored that in this life, I've been able to cultivate deep, meaningful friendships. Yeah, it, it, it's always really um, not necessarily concerning to me, but it makes me really, really sad when I'll see women on posts who are like, well, that's just how women are and women don't do this. And that's why I don't have any girlfriends. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just like, how have you have how have you survived this life? When they say like, oh, I um I don't have girlfriends, I only have guy friends, or I'm one of the boys or stuff like that. I'm like, how do you like when you're younger, like a like a preteen teenager, then I could see that maybe working a little bit. But as mm -hmm. life starts lifing and your womanhood really starts to flourish, you need other women. You yeah. need sisterhood. Sisterhood is what's going to carry you through so many of those challenging moments. So I 100% agree with this quote. It is necessary. It's not like it's not like a want. It is a need and a requirement to have healthy relationships with other women as women in order to thrive and even just survive in this world. Yeah, because and here's the thing, like I'm I was a tomboy growing up. I was to one of the guys where they didn't me even too. see me. I definitely was tomboys. Yeah, I was definitely yeah. like with the boys. Yeah. Yeah. And also with all of that, my female friendships have literally carried me through some of the darkest moments in my life. That that part in there where it's a tie to your sanity. It is how I have made it out alive through so many of life's challenges yeah. because of my deep, intimate friendships. I think one of the ways in which you can cultivate really deep friendships is to acknowledge what it is that you need and then which friends in your life or which friends you need to bring into your life to help to not only uh, provide for whatever that need is, but also there's a way in which you are able to show up for them with what they need. If every time you call on the people who are your persons, they can't help you or you aren't able to uh, find a way to navigate that thing together, then those might not be your people. And it is absolutely okay for you to go and find your people. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And that actually brings me to our dating well AF tip of the week. I need y'all to hear me and hear me well. Date multiple people at the same time. Date them all. Especially them women. All. This is more so for women in particular. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Date multiple It'll people at the same time. You have to. It allows you to keep your head in the game. It helps you so that you aren't so hard fastened on this one person to provide all of your needs and wants when you've only been dating for four days. Date multiple people. Dating multiple people does not mean you're sleeping with multiple people. It means you're dating multiple people. Dating is a fact finding mission. And you date if you if you cannot accept the fact that you are going to need to date multiple people possibly um, to be able to find your person, then it just elongates the time. You want to make sure that you're taking a look, okay, okay, he treats me like this, or this is the energy that he brings to it. I, I'm not sure if that will work for me. It's may the best man win. Like when did we, people are always trying to have the argument, oh, well, I'm the prize. No, I'm the prize. No, I'm the prize. No, I'm the prize. Listen, date them all. May the odds ever be in their favor and whoever provides the best experience that aligns most with what you want out of your lifestyle and experience, that is the one that you choose. And, one of, the, and one of the mistakes that I feel I see women make a lot when it comes to dating is being too accessible too early. 
Like you're way too accessible. You lose your mystery because you are just like, whenever he say jumps, whenever he says he wants to see you, you there, you there, you ready. You just like excited to just show up and show out every single time. And you need to get to a space where it's like, no, I'm actually busy on Saturday, but I'll see how my Wednesday's looking. You cannot just be accessible to somebody who has not earned the right to have that kind of space and take up that kind of space in your world and in your mind and in your heart. It's very important to date multiple people so that you can kind of stay busy. You can keep some mystery to you and you can kind of let them know without saying it outright that you are wanted and chased and desired. And that is how you tell people you're the prize without needing to say it all the time. And we also don't advise that you tell everyone that you are dating multiple people. That's not that's not something that needs to be, I don't feel like, needs to be disclosed explicitly unless you are sleeping with multiple people. That is very different. I think if yeah. you're sleeping with multiple people, then those people need to know. But I don't think that, um, and I think the person you're sleeping with may need to know you're dating multiple people if you're not sleeping with everybody else, but you're dating everybody else. But once sex comes into the picture, I do think that there should be some transparency just because of all the things that can be transferred during sexual contact. Someone should have a choice as to if they want to continue with you to do that or not, in my opinion. No, no, no. That, that, that's in total agreement. For me, yeah. when it comes to letting folks know I'm dating other people, it depends on uh, where we are in our courtship, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, like it's, you know, first date. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, if it comes up, sure. But I just don't think like that has to be harped on. Like, well, you know, I'm dating other people. Nah. Yeah. Mm, feel the vibes. You can, right. You can communicate that without communicating that so explicitly. Yeah. Um, but like I said, if sex comes into the picture, I think all parties involved need to be made aware. Um, yeah. Cause that is, I need to be able to make that choice with all the information that, um, that I need. Mm, and I also feel like one of the things that woman kind of, I don't want to say it's a mistake because I think it comes from like the purest place, but a lot of times we get into these situations and we kind of move our friends to the side to pursue or to get fully wrapped up into this situation with somebody. And your friends are also a good buffer to help you navigate relationships, especially in the early stages without you know, diving in too deep or without getting too wrapped up. Or sometimes your friends are the ones that can be like, mm, he's not the right one. Um, I actually went to go see the color purple um, this past weekend. And I was so moved by the theme of sisterhood and friendship. In the original, it's a little bit darker and it definitely had the same theme, but I really love that this musical retelling of the story was so much lighter and the woman and the unity and the sisterhood was just like heartwarming. Like if you're not brought to tears, it's like you're not getting it because it was really beautiful to see women come together and fight for each other and stand up for each other and be there for each other in really hard times. Like. It's not just friendships when everything is up. It was friendships when when shit was was real bad, and real they bad. they literally just like stood in the gap for each other in so many ways. And I thought that was that was beautiful. So it's it's nice to see a display of sisterhood, especially black sisterhood, um, on the big screen. It was nice. Yeah, I I'm a I'm a firm believer in cultivating those deep you know, friendships where it's not just surfacey. Of course, you'll have your surfacey friendships, but to have someone that you can trust with your life and and they continue to show you that they are worthy of that trust is a game changer. And that is exactly what we are going to be talking about in this episode, because there are so many things that happen, especially too, when you become friends in business. So we're going to let y'all all up in our business in this episode. So now to it. No matter what happens, I really want people to, if you take nothing else from what we're doing, you don't have to like one episode of the podcast. But what I do want you to see is, is what happens when you are consistent. In this season, we will hit over 100,000 downloads. Y'all, we've paid for no ads. This is strictly because you all have jumped on board with us. You yeah. are streaming the episodes, downloading them, sharing them with your friends. 
you all are literally co-creating with us and it can only happen if you're consistent. Yeah. And that is the most important part and the hardest part. And yes, it's eight seasons, but I think we're also coming up on our two years, three years. We're going into our third year of podcasting. Yeah. So, you know, it is really, really remarkable to stick to anything for even a month. Um, I think there's like a statistic that came out where it's just like 90% of podcasts don't make it to a year, a half a year. Like they, like the average podcast has 10 episodes <laughs> ever. Yeah. Because it's, it's hard. Like, yeah, if we keep it in a buck, it is difficult. Like this isn't easy, but for us, which is also one of the things we're going to talk about uh, in today's conversation, because you always hear like, don't mix, you know, business and pleasure, which, you know, that's neither here nor there, but also don't do business with friends or don't do business with family because it messes up the, you know, the friendship or you lose yeah. out. And so this particular conversation, yes, it's a conversation around friends and business, but more so it's a conversation around how do you get to know you so well that you're excited to continue to learn whomever it is that you're in close proximity with and you're ensuring that you're always aligning on what the goals are, understanding when things shift, when the phases and the seasons change and being willing to adjust to whatever those are to ensure that above all else, your friendship is maintained or whatever the relationship is that it's maintained. Yeah. And not feeling like you have to choose between a friendship and a business partnership with that person, because it's like, you ever go on like a date with a guy and it's like obvious that you guys can't be together, but you want to have him in some other capacity. And sometimes it's like that transition or trying to figure out what that looks like feels impossible. But some you we oftentimes miss out on dynamic and amazing relationships because we just don't know how to function in a certain lane. It's like if it's not this, it's nothing. Yeah. And it, it doesn't have to be like that. It's like, how do we find uh, a good harmony yeah. of all the different components that make this relationship work so that mm -hmm. we can move forward? And it takes a lot of time, I think. Yeah. Um, and it takes effort. It takes intention. It mm. takes a lot of grace and compassion for yourself and for your partner. It yep. requires you to have the level of empathy <laughs> that you need to kind of just navigate the world, but you need empathy for your partner all the time, every day. Like you, it, it's like, I don't want to say it's a marriage, but it is a marriage of sorts it's when you are marrying a business and a friendship in a relationship with someone. It, it definitely has a lot of those components that you would also need for a healthy marriage to work. Mm -hmm. And I feel like one of the things that I know we do really well is we have really tough conversations. Mm -hmm. Often, like often. And because we too, neither one of us are truth averse. Um, yes. And I think that's something that I have found that a lot of people are starting to have trouble with. I don't know if this is a new phenomenon or if this is something that has been occurring for a really long time, but like telling the truth and being um, open, because I don't believe in being brutally honest, but being open and, and, and honest about exactly what you're feeling, how something made you feel, what your expectation was, what you heard when they said something versus what they actually said like in business, especially if you are friends first, for me, and I tell Danny this all the time, the friendship is what's most important. And yeah, so I say that. And which I, I so appreciate because sometimes it's easy. It is easy for the lines to get blurred. And for you, especially because we are building still, we're still in building phase. And that's when a lot of the relationships fall apart is before you you know, like you're trying to build it and then like a little money starts coming in, some naysayers start coming in, other partners, other other voices start coming in and it crumbles because one, the foundation wasn't there, but also because it's so easy to get so frustrated in the building process on the journey that it's easier to just walk away. And you're so good at being like, no, nah, let's go have drinks. Now nah, let's go do this because we're friends first. Like we'll have a whole scheduled meeting about something super important 
And if one of us is off, if like you can just tell somebody's down or mm -hmm. there's just like an energy that doesn't feel like this is a good time, we will literally just put it off to another day because mm -hmm. it's more important for you to vent. It's more important for me to get it off my chest. Like if we have to be in a meeting for three hours, we're going to do that. And if two of those hours are for us to kind of like, un like, you know, like get things off Move of our it through. Like yeah. only to each other, we do that. And I think that 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 helps us really honor each other throughout our process. Yeah, I, I absolutely feel that that's where if you are thinking about maybe I want to do business with my friend, because I have a number of uh, friendships that have ended because they decided to do business together. Um, some of them I was a part of some of some of them I was, um, you know, an outsider or a consultant. And the main major theme that ran through each of them was this one thing. There was a a major character development piece that one or both or sometimes all of the parties did not and would not acknowledge. When when we say you and I have tough conversations, we tell each other because we are friends, we tell each other the the, the most terrible things about our personalities yeah. or about yeah. the way we think yeah. um, or about how we're feeling, especially. Yeah. I remember just the other day I was like, Danny, it's me. It's something wrong with me. And this is why this is how I'm thinking or how I'm feeling. And if as friends if that major character uh, development uh, piece of that person, if that is one of your non-negotiables, it will be very difficult to do business with that friend. And if you're thinking about it and you have not yet gotten into it, you may not want to enter that business relationship with that particular friend because that flaw and because I'm tired of saying character development, we just going to call it a flaw. <laughs> that that flaw in them does not work for you in any lane. Yeah. And it, business. You. Yeah. And it, and it triggers you like mm -hmm. I love that. Like, let, let's kind of lay out like who you shouldn't do business with. Yep. Because that is a it's not we're not saying like all friends, you know, should do business together because that is not the case, obviously, based on just the whatever those statistics must be <laughs> on friends doing business. I'm sure it's much higher that it doesn't work out. Don't do business with friends that you don't fully trust. Yeah. Like if yeah. you don't really a hundred percent, you have to be honest with yourself. Yeah. Do you, the first thing you should ask is, do I trust this person? Like if I had $1 million and I was like, Hey Alicia, I'm going away for a year. I need you to put this $1 million aside and I want a $1 million when I get back. <laughs> I know that even if she went into the million dollars and used it for something, she would make sure that by the time I get back, the million dollars was there. Yeah. And if she didn't need to tap into it, if she needed it for something, she would communicate with me like, Absolutely. oh my God, like this and this happened. Can I borrow 20,000 out of this? Like you have to be able to have, that is trust. Like, can we have yes. conversations? Can I, is this person going to come to you about every little thing? Do I trust this person with my secrets? Alicia and I have been calling each other our favorite secret keepers for a decade. Like, yes. we know that, like, we know where the bodies are buried for each other. Oh, so we God. always will be like, look, we have to stay friends. Like, <laughs> we blood yes. it out with this because you know too much. I can't let you just go into the streets. <laughs> you got it information about me are you crazy that is a bad business decision so you know that is a part of you know our foundation and our fabric of our friendship even before mm -hmm. we got into businesses we always will tell each other the dark ugly unattractive things about mm -hmm. ourselves and we just always were able to do that with each other so i feel like if you can't trust somebody don't go into business with them absolutely it do you do you respect or or does their character align with Again, before the business piece, because you working with humans in business. Yep. So does their character, does how they treat you? Like for me, I, I truly do believe and maybe you shouldn't do business with soulmates. And, and if that's your belief, cool. This conversation isn't for you. But for me, I feel like and Danny, I really do have my soulmate or one of my soulmate because I also do believe you have multiples. Danny is one of my soulmates. So for me, the reason the friendship comes first is it's because I am a firm believer in if the business died tomorrow, I still have my friend, which is what is most important. Yeah. And because I consider her a soulmate and someone who I really do love, I consider her like my blood sister. The way I see Keisha, who's my blood sister, that's how I see Danny. 
Yeah. And so for me, it's always how would I want my sister to be treated? I don't know about y'all, but I used to fight a lot. And mm -hmm. my sister, right? My my blood sister, she's a lot more docile than I am. Me, I can go zero to 100 real quick. My sister's a lot more docile. So she would take and accept a lot more disrespect than I would. Now, I'm, a, I'm, I'm I've grown a lot. So mm -hmm. I'm not always zero to 100 you know, all, all the time. But I protect my sister with a fierce energy. And so for me, because we're doing business together, I also protect her, her as in Danny, with that same energy. So it's identifying and paying attention to what phase and stage of life is she in? What can she handle? And sometimes she'd be like, girl, I'm fine. I could do that. And I'd just be like, mm, okay. But I think the overall message there is just like being very considerate and aware and like, you know how they like, oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't put emotions in business or you shouldn't have like your personal life and business. It's just like, yeah, but we're humans. Like we're not robots. We're not slaves. So like my personal life is going to impact the business. My mood is going to impact this conversation. Like what do you, like that, that is what's happening. And we've grown up in such a passive aggressive culture of mm. business, of work environments where it's just like, clearly there's something wrong with this bitch, but <laughs> we're going to act like we're okay in this meeting today, even though she's like, making a big deal out of nothing or she's sending me nasty emails with all caps like something's wrong there right but yeah. we are in such a, a culture where we don't address those things in business because that's unprofessional you know for us we we will just talk about all the things and i feel like because we are so considerate like she'll get on we i promise you i literally have memories like a hundred of them where we get on the phone and one of our voices sounds off <laughs> or the energy's off. And it's just like, hold on, what's going on? Like, mm -hmm. let's get that out the way. Like it, it actually makes more sense to get that out the way first so that we can have a productive meeting as opposed to mm -hmm. one of us trying to fight through whatever we're actually going through and can't even focus for real because there's all this other stuff on our plate. It's really important. If you don't have a, a friend, if you're wanting to go into business with a friend that you can't have the tough conversations with, that's not the friend you want to go into business with. So if you can't trust them, if you can't talk to them about any and everything, that's not the friend you want to go into business with. If this is somebody that does not have strengths that you admire, mm. that's not someone you want to go into business with. You that's need to have, have like this deep respect for each other so that even if you're frustrated, even if you're irritated, even if you're angry, there's, there's this level of respect that Alicia and I yeah. have always shared because we both have strong personalities. We both got slick ass mouths. We both like to fight and cuss people out. Or we used to. We used to. We used to. We're involved. I know, I know, I know. We interrupted at the best part, but hear me out. Dating should not be this hard. Let's be honest. We've all said it at least once that the dating pool has pee in it. It has to. After dozens of dates, too many failed relationships, engagements, marriages, and even a divorce, we decided it was crucial that we find ways to be better at attracting the partners that we desire. So we did just that. And we created the Dating Well AF course. It's specifically designed to show women how to date with intention and in alignment with their desired type of lifestyle and experience. The five module crash course developed by certified coaches, Alicia and Danny, provides practical tools to date well and live even better. So I want you to register now for lifetime access to the Dating Well AF course at datingwellaf.com. You will tap all the way in to learn how to identify those self-sabotaging behaviors, discover new ways to date intentionally, and to nurture that healthy love. Remember, one of the most important life decisions you will ever make is who you decide to make your partner. Make the choice well and visit datingwellaf.com. Now, back to the episode. So we both know, it's like, it's like, um, like, at, like whenever you see, like, my dad's super into boxing, so I grew up watching a lot of boxing. And when you see, like, two heavyweight champs about to fight, you could always tell there's this respect that they have for each other when great fighters come together. It's the same thing in any arena. When you just have respect for somebody, it changes the way you deal with them. So if it's a friend that you do not respect the life decisions they make, you don't respect the way they move about the world and show up in the world... That's not the friend you want to go into business with because that's going to come up. 
Res disrespect is a revolving door. It's it's why it's so important not to even open it up because it's very hard to close a door of disrespect. It just is. I, I don't know, especially for women. Once we start, I always tell men, like, once she starts disrespecting you, it's time for you to go because she's never going to start respecting you again. Respect is such a delicate thing you know it's like once it's gone it's just it i'm not saying it's impossible to get it back but it's really hard so i feel like because we have this kind of respect and reverence for each other and our skills and our talents and our gifts we try to honor that so much that it it like i i choose my words and i choose my tone and it's not about walking on eggshells it's just about like being very conscious about how i communicate with my sister with my friend we call her the sister friends and I think that if you can do that in a relationship, but in a friendship that if you guys have that kind of dynamic where it's like, I'm keeping it hundred percent real with you, but the way I package things is going to be in a way I know you can receive. That is also someone you can do business with. But if you can't be like that with that person and y'all cuss each other out and y'all talk to each other crazy and y'all like to like be nice, nasty with each other, don't go into business. Cause that, that business of the pressures of business is going to crack y'all immediately. It's kind of like having a baby with someone who, uh, when you're in a, a, a really shitty place, you think, oh, well, you know, what if we bring this new life forth? No, the baby will cause it to implode. Mm -hmm. If you already don't have respect for, don't know how to have conversations, don't understand what feedback looks like. Like Danny and I give each other feedback. Yeah. honest feedback. It really truly is in how you package and how you say things. It's not always what you say because you can tell me, hey, I'm really disappointed with the level of effort or I'm really disappointed with uh, the results that this came from us. And hey, these were the actions that we said we were going to take. This is what we actually did. This is why the results aren't so good. If you can't take feedback just in general, you shouldn't be going into business with anybody because it will require you to have really uncomfortable conversations about your level of effort, about the things that you did right, about the things that you did wrong. I know um, we did our first uh, live uh, live event in June of 2023. And the what after the conversation, Danny asked me, how how did you know, how did the event make you feel? And I was very honest and it wasn't a, she didn't fight me over my feelings. It wasn't a, her, you shouldn't feel that way. Or, well, this, this, that, and the third, it was literally just a, okay, I can see that. So the next time I want to make sure ABC, XYZ, yeah. we want to make sure we're doing this, that, and the third, but it's being able and being willing to hear feedback and not think it's somebody, um, uh, battling you or somebody saying you're this terrible, wrong a, you know, really crazy person. It's literally just, hey, this is what we said we what our goals were. This is where we hit it. This is where we didn't. This is where I think I fell short. This is where I think you fell short. This is what I think we can do in the future. If yeah. you cannot accept that kind of talk and those types of conversations, doing business with friends might not be for you. Yeah. Yeah. And if you are very ego driven, ego in the sense of just like, it's all about you and you're very self-absorbed and you don't know how to, like I said, be empathetic, but be super considerate about somebody else and also keeping your eyes on the mission. Like regardless of what's happening in my life, what happened, regardless of how I may feel sometimes, regardless of whatever for me, because I feel like our business and what we're doing is so tied to my overall purpose, it is very important to me for it to work. So it's just like, whatever whatever I may have usually said or whatever kind of direction I may want to take or if I want to quit or if I want to give up, yeah. I'm, it's so anchored in something bigger than the both of us that mm -hmm. it's very difficult to try to walk away. And I think that's one of the things is a lot of times our businesses are rooted in profit and rooted in the look and rooted in, you know, the, just to be able to say you're an entrepreneur and it's not rooted in your true purpose. Like, I think the main thing is figuring out what do you think your purpose is and how does the business serve you to get you to walk in that purpose fully in this lifetime? And if you're not able to do that in business, business, you're going to get burnt out. We hear it all the time from these multimillionaires, billionaires. They're like, I'm burnt out. I'm miserable. I'm unhappy. I realize that this wasn't all it was cracked up to me. I, you know, I'm still unhappy because a lot of times you're not finding your real true purpose. Like, why were you put on this earth? And I believe that like 
helping people with my voice, with the things I have to say, with connecting, like connecting with humans is my favorite thing on the planet. So because that comes naturally to me, I know that this is a part of the journey I'm supposed to take in this life. And even though there's different ways to get to that purpose, I really enjoy this one. I know that this one is a very, um, a very efficient vehicle to get me to where I'm trying to go. It's a slow burn, but I know that I'll get there. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah. rooted, rooting your business and your friendship in something bigger than yourself and bigger yeah. than the you and bigger than the overall business. I think if you have that kind of a foundation, it's easy to make the right decision all the time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And even too, and we talked to, we touched on it a little bit earlier where it's understanding what the phases look like. So for season eight, we're going to be on a uh, virtual, the entire season. Why? Because it's a different phase of life yeah. and it is okay to Hey, our why is still the same. The goal, the goal post has not moved. And also we won't be able to travel down uh, Avenue A in this particular season of our lives. We're going to need to take Route C. Yeah. And that's okay. And that's okay. And you also have to be willing to figure out what works for the whole, even yes. if it doesn't work for you. And that I think is probably the part where a lot of people get triggered because that kind of self-sacrificing behavior that's so anti now. And there's like, no one wants to self-sacrifice or sacrifice anything no more. Like that's not a thing. Sacrifice is like, why are we sacrificing? It should just like happen. You know, sacrifice is such a part of success. Like I don't know how, I don't know anyone that's successful without sacrificing something, something mm -hmm. has to give. And mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, like for right now, like in like the season she's talking about that we're in now in my life is I just had a baby, right? So because I just had a baby, I'm not comfortable traveling yet. I thought I maybe would be, but I'm not. So it's just like, we had to have another conversation, even though this was said, you know, while I was pregnant, like, yeah, I'll be fine. Let's do it. I had the baby. I'm like, mm, actually, I don't think so. I don't feel like that. And even if, even if it would make sense, even if I'm sure Alicia would really want to do that, we have to figure out what works for the overall um, production of this podcast, what works for our lives, what doesn't give me anxiety, what doesn't give her frustration, what's not going to cost us unnecessarily. Like we have to figure out what works. And even if it doesn't look exactly how you want it to look all the time, if it's still moving you forward, that is what's the most important. Like that's the most important thing. Okay, we'll do that another time. We'll do it yeah. that way. We'll do it your way the next time. You know, like we always know that because it is such a long journey that like whatever's not happening now will happen then. Like, yeah. But that takes moving your ego because yeah. for a lot of people, they'll be like, oh, well, but we said da 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 and we're supposed to do da 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 And what about what we said? And it's like, so are you really saying that people can never change their mind or once they get hit with a different set of circumstances? that there can be no change. I always like to to joke and say, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. <laughs> it's a joke because I'm forever evolving. However, you do have to allow and give space and grace and flexibility with the understanding that things are going to shift. The only constant in life is change. Yeah. You will have to be willing to, okay, when things change, let's be okay with that. We're going to have some of our top, you know, people on for this season, some amazing, amazing folks. And I absolutely wanted to do it in person. Be clear. Absolutely mm -hmm. wanted to do it. And also, because again, I think first of our friendship, I understood when she was speaking about me coming down to start filming, I was like, eh, I'm hearing what you're saying, but you're not really ready for what you think you're ready for. Because I'm not just listening to what she's saying. I'm also listening to what her energy is saying. And I know for some people, they're like, oh, it's not that deep. It yeah. is if you want to maintain your friendship and yeah. also build a business. Yeah. And so even though she was saying out of her mouth, no, it's okay. I'll get ready. I'll da 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 da. Alternatives is the name of the game. We have options. Yeah. And I think it, I think after for this particular issue or not issue, but like challenge that we had to figure out, I like said, OK, and I got off the phone. I was like, actually, no, I'm not OK. I, no, yeah. I'm not OK. I don't like it. It's not it doesn't feel good to me. And then I texted. I was just like, hey, can we just like do it virtually? Because I just I'm not ready for anyone to be here. I'm not ready to travel yet. Like I just need and 
it's it's hard for me sometimes to do that because that feels selfish to me where I feel like I'm not being considerate. And I think that that is a dynamic that helps and both people are really considerate. It's easier to get to a good place because you know that nobody's trying to just serve themselves. Like, mm -hmm. you know that it's hard for me to not do it your way because I want you to be happy. I want to do it the best way. I want us to be the best. So I think because we know that we're both never coming from like a selfish kind of self-serving place, even if it serves one of us more than the other in that moment, we both are so like, oh no, but I really want to do it the best way. I just, I, if I'm saying I can't, it's because I really, I just really am unable to. And yeah. the, the effort and energy that it's going to take for me to try to overcome that feeling is going to affect the way I do it. So it's just like, you have to kind of pick your battles and figure out, it doesn't make sense for me to travel and be uncomfortable and be on edge and not be my best self when I'm doing it. Or does it make sense to just scale it back, do it virtually and I can show up as a better version of myself? You know, like, you have to kind of figure out what's going to serve, again, the overall production, the whole picture, the whole um, the whole business and friendship in the best way, even if, like I said, someone benefits more in this moment than that moment. You know, like you've said that before, like I forgot what I was talking about. And I was like, yeah, but you're always doing this. And oh, I, I remember now, you have been like on a tour. <laughs> At least she has been in the group, okay? She is going to all these events and like pitching us. And like, you know, I just had a baby or I was super pregnant. So I wasn't able to travel. I'm not able to like be at all these things with her. And one day I was like, God, like I feel so bad. One, I have FOMO because I just want to be in the streets too. But I also feel like, damn, like, God, you're doing all these things and you're like meeting all these people. You're getting us all these connections. And like, I feel like I'm just not doing my part for real, you know, because like you're really out here doing things that that could really push the needle forward that that have pushed the needle forward for us and really getting us like, you know, the things that we've been trying to get. Yeah. And your response was just like, yeah, but that's just right now. That's just this season. Like you'll you'll do your part in another mm -hmm. season. You've done Don't your worry. part. Other, in other spaces and you know like so you just have to be really okay with a give and take you have to be okay with reciprocity looking different but being equal Ooh, you know like a lot one. of times we want reciprocity to look the exact same i give you a flower you give me a flower no what if you give me a flower and i give you some sugar soil that you yeah or i give you something that's no but not even soil like i give you something completely different not related to anything that you've given me but it's something, it's something. And I think that's some, that is oftentimes why relationships get really rigid and they get really transactional is because you start to feel like there's no reciprocity and you need reciprocity. Don't get it twisted now. Reciprocity is a major key. It needs to, it's a component of any healthy relationship. Once people start to feel like there's no reciprocity, they realize that they're not getting a return on their investment and they will clear it on you. Even the most given person will at some point feel so drained from lack of reciprocity, they will walk away. So reciprocity is very important to both of us, but it just may not always look the same. It may not be at the same time, but mm -hmm. if the overall um, bucket is full, we're okay. Absolutely. And that too brings me to something that people don't understand. You were just talking about reciprocity. It's also taking a real hard look at what each other's skills are. Yes. I honestly do not expect Danny to lead on the technical piece. Mm -mm. That makes no sense. Nope. Like, going we would frustrate the shit out of each other if I was like, well, you just need to learn it. Nope. But why? That's not her skill set. It's just not a thing for her. She doesn't nope. enjoy it. And I'm not saying that you should only do things that make you feel good. Oh, trust and believe there are lots of things that she's learning that <laughs> I'm learning that we do not like. I'm like, that we do not like. We'll literally have conversations like, okay, what do you like the most? Like, what doesn't bother you? Like, for me, like, I don't mind posting on Instagram. Like, I hate I, it. I like coming up with captions, but I don't want to come up with like the actual graphic. Like, Alicia is really good with graphic design, and she's like really into that, and she wants to put like the meme together and the picture together. I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that. I have no interest in learning that. It's just not how my brain works. But I like to write. So give me the caption, girl. I'll come up with the caption. I'll post it. I'll do the music. Like, I love putting posts together. I will do that, right? So we're like, okay. I don't then, like it. <laughs> let's split it up. I will put it together. And I said, also, I don't want to have to think about what to post. So if you could just get that piece together, 
I will do the posting and I will do all that stuff. And we're like, okay, boom, that works for us. You know, like you have to figure out, like you said, what the strengths are, what the weaknesses are, what is easier. Not that people shouldn't learn and cannot learn because I've learned so much on this journey with you from you. But it's like, what are the things that will kind of continue to give us little spurts of joy throughout the process? Yep. What are the things that we can do with a little more ease most of the time? So mm -hmm. that when you have to do the hard things, it doesn't feel like it's always so hard. You know, Absolutely. it's just like you have to find, it's not even a balance. You have to find like a, a way to do the things that bring you joy often so that when you do the things that aren't as pleasant, are frustrating, that you have to learn, that are going to take a little more time and effort, it doesn't feel like you're so overwhelmed with doing all these things you don't like. It shouldn't feel like that. And I think because we are so conscious, again, and so considerate, we try to figure out how we can do things together without frustrating the other person too much. Absolutely. Because here's the thing. If you're always in a frustrated state, that's going to start to it's it's real insidious that that frustration, especially when yeah. it comes to working with friends in business, yeah. because you'll start to get snappy and you're like, yeah. why am I always? But you, you don't tell yourself stories about the other person, about what they're the about, what they're doing. Yep. Mm -hmm. All the stories. So it's having a very real conversation. OK, what are we both best at? What do we need to hire out? Um, what yeah. do we need to, okay, let's bring back in when things are, when you're having issues, don't wait two weeks. That's something there. Women, I love us. Hey, hey y'all. Um, women will literally sit for years sometimes yeah. without having tough conversations or you don't even got to be tough without saying what you don't like because, oh, you don't want to rock the boat or, oh, but they're trying their best. It's okay to say someone's trying their best and the best is not sufficient for what I need. Yeah. Ooh. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. That's yeah. okay. This is not enough. Like when yes. we were talking about this off air, like a tough, like, cause I was like, oh, do we have any, have we had any conflict? Like, cause we literally like Alicia and I really don't fight. Like, it's not like we're putting on for the podcast or for people. Like we just don't, we just never have. We just are not really like that. We can just talk through things and we, not to say we don't disagree or we haven't had issues or like moments that we're like, uh, I ain't yeah. like that. That happens, yeah. but it's just like, we don't like, blow up or like it doesn't get into like a, a shouting match or like this nasty conversation like we just don't do that and this but, is over 15 years so we not like babies in the game we've been together longer than yeah, some right we, folks <laughs> yeah and we've been friends really young which before doing healing work before doing all that stuff but like i said i think we've just always had a very deep level of respect for each other absolutely but, um one thing that we had the most recent thing i would say is for the evolve experience that we had back in june you know, Alicia was doing a lot, right? She was the only one on ground in New York, kind of getting everything, not kind of, definitely getting everything together. Um, I was in Miami. Our other partner um, lives somewhere else. So it's just like she was the one that was there weeks before kind of doing all the things. And it was overwhelming for her. Alicia is not the best at asking for help. No, and she's not. Because she's not the best at asking for help, she will just take it on, take it on, take it on until she gets very frustrated and overwhelmed. And then she'll start to feel like, God, nobody's doing their part. Everything is doing, everything is on me. And in all honesty, too much of it was on her, right? And, you know, a lot of the the things that were supposed to be done in this time frame didn't get done in that time frame. So it did end up piling up, again, mostly on her because she's the one in New York where the event was on the ground, right? Yeah. So there was this conversation that we had. Our other partner was there for the, that's a part, that was a part of the Evolve experience. And um, we were kind of ironing out some of the final details before traveling to, um, before we all traveled up to New York. At that time, I was about maybe five or six months pregnant. I had already, I wasn't a hundred percent sure if my husband was going to come. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm traveling alone. Like, you know, I'm pregnant. I've never really done that before. So Anxiety on my end for that. Anxiety on Alicia's end because she's super overwhelmed and frustrated that so much of it is falling on her because she's there um, and just doing all the things. And New York is not a good, it's not a fun place, I would assume, to try to do a lot of things um, because the energy there is already so charged. Getting around and moving around is not that easy. It wasn't your own space. Like it's a, it was a lot. It was a lot. So long story short, we had a conversation and um, our the person that was doing our catering needed the, a suitcase to be um, sent up to New York ahead of time, ahead of them. And they um, were in Miami. So that. They were, yeah, they were in Miami already. And I am in Miami. 
and they wanted to send the suitcase or they wanted the suitcase to be traveled up before they actually got to New York because they were traveling with a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so during the conversation, Alicia's kind of like, we're like, all right, what are some final things we need to do? Da, da, da. And Alicia's like, oh, well, this person's going to do this. Da, da, da. And then she's like, okay. And then, and then Danny, you'll just grab um, such and such a suitcase and you'll take it up with you. And I was like, wait, skirt. <laughs> <laughs> Because one, that's a conversation we had never had. She never mentioned it. And again, because I know she's moving so fast all the time, she is really good at having conversations with you in her head. And um, very good at that. Yeah, like she does that often. So I, I immediately know, okay, that's what happened. Don't get mad at that part that she just never said anything to you because she probably thought she did, but she did it. But that's okay because she does it all the time, right? Yes. Okay. As so consistent. <laughs> But I'm still irritated because I feel like I'm pregnant. Well, I'm not feeling like pregnant. I feel like she's not considering the fact that I'm pregnant. She's not considering the luggage that I have to carry with me. At that point, I wasn't 100% sure if my husband was coming or not coming. It was just like, why did you assume that I'd be okay with like lugging extra luggage while I'm pregnant? Like, I'm not okay with that. Yeah. And I was like, why would you not think that you got to bring it if it's in Miami and you in Miami? So it was literally a... Yeah, we were just like, well, you should think about this. And the person like, well, you should think about that. And it's like, oh, oh, let's right. Have a, let's have a conversation. Well, during the conversation, I don't really, I don't say anything. I'm like, mm, okay, all right, that's fine. And then I was sitting with it, and you start to tell yourself stories. I'm just like, why, do, like, why the fuck would you think I was okay with that? Like, that just felt, it felt inconsiderate. Mm -hmm. It felt like she just wasn't, like, she didn't care that. I had to do something extra physically right now. And it was just like, well, you probably think you're just doing so much. Somebody need to do something, goddamn. And I sat with it for like a couple hours. And I think like later on that day, I called you and I was like, I expressed myself. I was like, hey, you know, like I get a little bit triggered when people just assume my energy, assume my time, assume my money, whatever it is. I don't like when people just decide for me what I'm going to be doing. Um, I have been taking advantage of that like, a lot in that space where people just assume that I'm going to do something because I may have more or I may be able to do this. Like, I don't like that. So it's a, it's a triggering thing for me. So I explained that to her and her response was like, I just am not able to really receive that right now. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't I able to receive it. it. She was like, I just like, I, you were like, I'm just not able to really process that. Like, I don't think I'm going to give you the best response at this time because I am so frustrated and overwhelmed. And I don't understand like what the big deal is, why you can't do this as one small thing. And you know, like, and she, and I have never heard her response to me like that. Cause I thought I would just be like, oh, okay, girl, da, da, da. She was like, no, like I'm not receiving this well. I just, <laughs> I'm not really liking that you feel this way. <laughs> And I think most people would have just wanted to get off the phone because it was so uncomfortable when she said that to me. I was like, what? Whoa. Like I wasn't anticipating that. And you know, you're always nervous a little bit when you're having to confront anyone, no matter how yeah. close you are, no matter how good you are with that person. Like mm -hmm. confrontation is just, an un it's, it's why so many people avoid it. It's uncomfortable. Yes, it is. And when the person gives you a, like, a very different response that you weren't expecting from them, it's even like, oh shit, like, oh God, I should just kept my mouth shut, right? And but then, I'm glad you didn't keep your mouth shut though. I yeah, was really but I, glad. But I felt like that when, with your response, I was just like, okay. And then I knew the conversation could go one of two ways. I knew I could either be combative and argue her down with my point, or I could start asking better questions to see where her frame of mind was, why she felt that way. And why she thought it was okay to volunteer me to take the suitcase and what the whole scope was, because I honestly didn't know. Like I didn't know that the that the um the caterer was taking a bunch of other stuff. You know, like I just I didn't know the whole details of yeah. why I needed to take the suitcase and things like that. Because I also hadn't communicated that either. So I think mm -hmm. being willing to think of all of the pieces. So yeah, I was frustrated in that. Like, girl, why are you coming to me with this if you don't grab this suitcase? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> And then it's also, well, I have to remember, A, everyone is not me. When I was pregnant, unfortunately, I had to do everything like by mm -hmm. myself. See, I didn't think about that. Yeah. My ex-husband left at six months to go with the military. I put together her crib. I put together her dresser. That dresser was heavy as hell. Like I had done all those things. So in my mind, oh, girl, pregnancy don't mean nothing. Take a lick it and keep on ticking. Like I it, never thought it. 
And for me, like, mm -mm, like I told my husband about the suitcase. He was like, absolutely not. I'll just ship it. <laughs> Problem solved. But like, see, I was like, that told him before I confronted her because that would have just solved everything without that hard conversation. Mm -hmm. But it was a necessary conversation necessary. to have. But, you know, when I told him, he was just like, oh, no, you're not taking an extra suit. Like, what? No. Because that's but my that's story. also, too, when you have people in your life who think protection I haven't, unfortunately, okay. always had that. For me, it's always been, no matter how tough it is, how whatever, I've had to figure it out. Figure Which it honestly out. is yeah. is heartbreaking. And I wish I didn't have that as my story or yeah. as my experience. But you always have to, too, understand that people are speaking to you, making decisions and moving through life with their own set of unique experiences. Yes. Because yes. in my mind, oh, the suitcase ain't nothing. In yeah. her mind, it's like, yo, I'm pregnant. How you expect me to have this suitcase, my suitcase? I'm flying to New York. Like I'm doing all the things. It never occurred to me. And it wasn't because I was trying to be callous. It's because literally in my mind, I was like, oh, girl, pregnancy don't stop nothing. And it's like, man, right, everybody's it's not you. It's easy to read that as inconsiderate, you know, like yeah. from the other person, it's just like, oh, you don't give a fuck that I'm pregnant. Like what? Like, and like for me, and another thing too, is I ended up from my second pregnancy at five months, I was way bigger than I was with my first daughter. So mm -hmm. I'm five months pregnant, but I look like seven months pregnant. So I'm already Thanks. feeling slower. I'm already just like, you know, and then I think when I said it to you, you were just like, yeah, but you're just taking it from the door to the conveyor belt, you know? And I was just like, that's mm -hmm. a that's a lot for me to like get it out of the car, walk with two suitcase, like lift it. Who's gonna, like, it was just like, huh? Like that is not going to be like pleasant for me. And it was already so uncomfortable. Like the thought of traveling that big and walking through an airport and she's like, oh yeah, well you could just get a wheelchair. And then, and I was just like, yeah, but I don't like, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to think about that. I don't want to like go through that. And y'all see my mind. I'm always like, oh no, but we have solutions for this. And she's just like, ma'am, um, Man, like, mm -mm, mm -mm, we are, mm -mm, you got to soft like me, please, because I'm not doing that. But you know, it, I think so. What I want to go back with the conversation, I think the best part of the conversation was we sat in it. Yeah, we, we sat, sat in an it. uncomfortable place. We I did not get off the phone. Yeah, she didn't get off, and you wanted to. You wanted to. I, I absolutely wanted to. Yeah, oh, you yeah. wanted to get off. The, like you wanted me to. You thought you were dismissing me with the like, I'm not really processing this right now. I'm not going to respond in the best way. And you want to be like, okay, well, girl, call me back when you feel better. I was like, okay, well, wait, why do you feel like that? What's going on? Like, why are you know, like what's happening with you? And it was just like, and, and I, and I don't want to get teary eyed, but it really is so special. Whatever was wrong with me immediately went away because something was wrong with you. Like, it was just like, oh, something's wrong with Alicia now. Like, forget whatever I'm going through. Oh my God, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry too. <laughs> And neither one of us are pregnant, y'all. I don't know. I know. I mean, I'm postpartum, so maybe, but I don't know what it's making. But me I'm not postpartum, pregnant. nor am I pregnant. Oh my god, that's so weird. I didn't feel that coming. But it was just like whatever I felt, whatever frustration or anger, yeah. it was like when I heard her voice and I heard that she was so overwhelmed. Like I just like that's all that mattered at that point, you know. Yeah. And I could tell that you really did care, and it wasn't just like, well, bitch, do <laughs> this. Is what I'm not gonna do. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, oh no, like it's it like di like whatever it was just dissipated. I was just like, oh no, like Alicia is in distress. Like, fuck a suitcase. And you know, like at that point, like, and I think sometimes in friendships and relationships, we just want to beat our chest and you just want to be right and die on the hill. And you lose your friendships and you lose your relationships because you don't know how to just like at some point, like, at, like once someone I love is hurting, like, I, I, it's like, okay, like, what's happening with you? Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's more important for me to now solve whatever is going on with you, you know? And I just, I, that is so special. I didn't even realize that until looking back at it now. But I remember the feeling of when you were just like, I'm just so frustrated and overwhelmed. And, and then that was, that, that's what matters now. You know, it wasn't you trying to make it about you. But it was important for me to understand where you were coming from so that we could like remove those stories from our head. And I think yeah. we would end up being on the phone for like two, three hours, just like yeah. working through your experience and what your experience had been leading up to that, that I didn't know because you, of course, in your own selfless way, you were trying to kind of shield me from that because I was pregnant, you know? So it's just like, 
it's so important to find people who just care about your heart, care about your mental space, care about your well-being outside of everything else. Like that yeah. is that is so beautiful. I don't know yeah. why I that, but it really is special. No, it, it really is. And I had never even thought about the fact that because my life has been full of so many challenges that I didn't even think that, hey, this is something that's more difficult. And so for me, it, it, it kind of hurt in, in that moment. I didn't think about it until today, but in that moment, it kind of hurt because it's like, but I would never try and hurt you. Yeah. yeah. And so the fact that I hurt you, I think I boohoo cried on the phone with you that day too. Yeah. 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 Throughout our conversation, because I was just like, why would you think I would ever try and hurt you? Like that's, I don't operate yeah. like that. I don't do tit for tat. Like I was telling a, a, a guy, one of the guys I'm talking to now, I was like, hey, yo, I don't do tit for tat. Like, if you're thinking that I'm trying to just go up against you because I don't have the energy, bruh. <laughs> I didn't think I didn't think it was intentional. I just thought it was just yeah. like you just didn't understand. Like I never yeah. would I were just trying to be mean or trying to be. I just think you were just like there was too many moving parts for you to yeah. think about that piece, you know? So yeah. I wasn't it wasn't that I was frustrated with like you and me feeling like you're going to you're trying to be malicious never it was just like you're you're just not thinking you know like it was more absent-mindedness as opposed to maliciousness which both can be frustrating but the feeling was just like hey i need you to understand this about me because i don't want us to end up here again you know and i explained yeah. to you how I felt that way and you explained to me why you felt the way you felt and i think it just ended up being something that brought us i didn't think we'd get any closer but even closer just to understand like our own boundaries when it comes to certain things and yeah. so as to not get offended or frustrated in those moments because it's like, oh no, I know that about her. And that's another yeah. thing that I think, and this is really a conversation about relationships, but I think that when you get a piece of new information about someone, as opposed to weaponizing it against them, to hold them hostage, to yeah. hurt them, use that as a way to guard them. Like every little notch you get, like put that in the gate that you're using mm -hmm. to guard their heart and protect their well being. Whenever I learn something new about a friend, a loved one, and it's like, oh, no, that makes me upset. That hurts me. That, like, I try to do everything in my power to never do that again. Yeah. And I think you know. some of us are, you, are so used to, like, getting information and trying to sift information out of people so that we can have the upper hand and abuse them. And it's like, that's not what you do with valuable, vulnerable information. You take mm -hmm. that and you use it as a shield to protect your loved ones. It's not a weapon to hurt them. Like, that's... Yeah. that's same to me. Like, I just, I've never understood that concept. Absolutely. Especially when it comes to, as you are growing, right? Because you take how business usually works. And I've built a couple of companies, I've advised on, on multiple companies, some of which are um, nine figure companies at this point. Um, so what, how it usually works is, is you go from idea, mm -hmm. uh, uh, idea problem, then it's, okay, uh, solution, which is your product or your service. Then mm -hmm. it's figuring out, okay, how we're going to um, uh, implement or how we're going to, you know, get this product or service into the hands of the target customer. Um, so then it's, okay, we sell our first piece. Of course, there are a bunch of things that happen in between all that, but just for the gist of it, you sell your, per your first piece, which is usually now, okay, you've monetized. And then from monetization goes to then, of course, or the goal <laughs> is to go from monetization <laughs> to profitability, right? The lead up in every one of those phases, it will require different things out of both partners. Yeah. And so Danny and I, we don't even mean to, I mean, I think we do mean to because we both work in such healing spaces. We're always doing check-ins based yeah. on where we're at. Yeah, constantly. I mean, we do it all. The, I mean, just about every conversation is like, okay, where are you at? Where are we at? Mm -hmm. How do you feel about this? Like, we don't really leave too much room for assumptions yeah. because assumptions make an ass out of you and me, right? To assume makes an ass out of you and me. Mm -hmm. And we don't really do that. So it's like when there needs to be a change where we're like, hey, this isn't working. I didn't like this rollout. I didn't feel like this was the best, you know, episode. I didn't like, you know, and it's like, okay, what can we, it's always about the solution though. It's like, okay, but what can we do now? What can we do moving forward? But those check-ins, especially if you're doing business with friends, to do them constantly. And it's like, you can never talk about each other and what you guys are doing together enough. There aren't too many conversations that you can have, you know? So I definitely love our check-ins. I, I, I think we just realized today that we actually do them and there's a name for them. But 
to do those check-ins regularly, like if you can every day, every other day, <laughs> weekly, like, hey, how are you feeling about this? Hey, this, we've been doing this for some time. Like, let's check in on it. Is it working? Is it not working? Is it, is the numbers moving up? Like what, what's happening mm -hmm. constantly? If you let things sit, simmer, and you let them sit there, I don't even think it's simmering, because simmering means it's cooking. If you let things rot, <laughs> if you let them, you know, like sit there and you're not really addressing them and you just want to yeah. put them on the back burner because you don't want to deal with it, it's going to fester into a sore, into a problem, and it's going mm -hmm. to end up becoming the catalyst that breaks you guys up. Yeah. Talk about everything all the time. You mm -hmm. can't be bothered. It can't be a bother to talk to each other. It can't, it can be text message. It could be phone calls. It could be FaceTime. It could be emails. We have, you have to be able to just have this kind of like stream of dialogue constantly. Yes. You know, yes. like we don't go more than three days without talking to each other. And it, whether it's on friendship or business, but it's just like, Hey, I have this idea. Hey, this came through. Hey, this people want to meet. Hey, these people like, Oh, we secure this interview. Like it, it, it has to be a tennis match of conversation mm -hmm. so that nothing kind of gets lost in translation, especially if you're in a different city. Like we don't even live in the same city anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's really important for us to kind of always be in communication with each other because otherwise it's very easy for things to just get lost in the in the transition and in translation easy so easy it's happened to us and we learned like yeah we need to talk more like that literally happened and we we're like yeah we need more meetings yeah we need to touch base here and there like and yeah figure out that that's the issue and move forward absolutely and two it's it's okay to be like, well, they have this life or they're doing these things. When I tell you the way Danny and I schedule is crazy, crazy. Our schedules are wild. And even with such wild schedules, it's, hey, do you have capacity this week to meet da 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 da? These yeah. are things we kind of need to go over. This is what I'm thinking. You let me know what it is. Sometimes she responds immediately. Sometimes I respond immediately. Sometimes it takes us hours yeah. to get back to each other, but we will. And it's still just understanding. I think if you're going to do, you know, business with a friend, it's of course, all the things that we've said previously, we're going to try and summarize it for y'all as we, as we close out, but it's always acknowledging and honoring the fact that, Hey, this is our why. This is the solution that we're providing to X, Y, Z group of people. And this is how it feels good to us. Mm, that's a big piece. Yeah. That's the thing is how, how it brings us joy. You know, it's not yeah. just about the grind and the hustle and the and being in the, what do they call it? Getting it out the mud. I don't want to get it out the mud. I don't want to get out the mud. I don't. I, you know, and we are on the same page. And that's probably, you know, as we close out, being on the same page with somebody and making sure you stay on that page or at least in the same book, you know? It's in um, the same book. You may be in different chapters sometimes, yeah. but at least you gotta be in that same, in the same book. Yeah. And and this piece really quickly too, that, that just came to me is, you know, there are gonna be different seasons and different spaces where someone may feel further ahead in this space or further ahead in that space, it's important to, if there are feelings of envy or jealousy that come up in that situation, it's really important that you kind of, I don't want to necessarily say you have to address them because I know that's hard for most people. It's not hard for us, but I do think realistically it's hard for people to acknowledge jealousy and envy or feeling left out or feeling like they're not good enough. And mm -hmm. we are able to have those conversations, but if you're not able to have that conversation, one thing Alicia always says is, you know, my if you're just starting something, you cannot compare your chapter two to my chapter 24. It's if I'm doing fair. something longer, that's simply the reason why it is what it is. Like you can't just start and, and start comparing yourself to people that have been in the game for a decade. So, you know, just trying to kind of navigate those feelings of comparison and inadequacy early and consistently and all the time to realize that the strengths that you both have, whether it's, um, one person is further along in this arena. This person is further along in that arena. This person has this thing that you want. That person has that thing that you want. Just think of it as a whole pie that comes together to make you guys work as opposed to somebody has something that you're lacking. You know, like it's not about that you, you, you have things that I lack. It's about that you have things that I can benefit from. I have things that you can benefit from. And as a whole, we are better. 
Yeah, as a whole, we really make that sweet potato pie taste the best because <laughs> yeah, we're moving by ourselves, but we're of course when oh, we're together. Okay? So you know, keeping those things in mind because it's easy, like I said, for that jealousy and envy to creep in. I know in a lot of dynamics. So we always will like, I know for me, that's what I do. Like, I always remember that, like, it's like the whole thing together. It just works mm -hmm. like that, you know, and we both have different things to contribute always. And whatever my weaknesses are, I'm so happy I have someone who has those strengths as yeah. opposed to envious of those strengths. Absolutely. And also, too, it's for those who are feeling it is asking yourself, why do I feel this way? Mm -hmm. Like, What is the, the root cause? So I'll even give an example, right? I love the fact, and it's not jealousy because I'm not jealous of any of my friends. It's not even envy. I think it's kind of like maybe, I don't know. We're going to figure out if I come up with a word by the time I'm finished this. So Danny has a really amazing partner. Like when I tell you Reggie, now he didn't, he didn't been with us through the muck and the miry place. This yeah. beautiful logo you see, um, that's her husband. He designed it for us, even for Just Thrive Fest. When y'all see that, and trust me, you're going to see that, go to triggeredafevents.com. Um, but like, he has been such a huge support, like yeah. organized our first, uh, 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 what was that photo shoot that we did? I mean, has just been there as a huge support, even with the luggage situation. He's like, oh, no, no, we're shipping that. It'll be fine. <laughs> it wasn't an envious or a jealousy thing for me it was a tang like i could only imagine how much easier it is when you know for sure for sure that you have someone who loves you so much that they're willing to pick up the slack to give of themselves to support so for me when i looked at it one day and i was like what is my feeling around that like mm -hmm. i said it wasn't jealousy it wasn't envy it was a longing yes it was a longing, like, dang, I really want that. And yes, of course, I have my family. My family is phenomenal and amazing. I was like, but I want that from a partner because yeah. I've been that to partners, but I haven't had that for real, for real from a partner. And so when I asked myself, why do you feel that way? Why am I longing for that? Not longing for it from him because I don't play them type of games, <laughs> um, but just longing for it in general. Yeah. I was like, huh, I feel that way because that's how I show up. Mm -hmm. And so even when talking with Danny, we were just talking through the other day, I believe, about what has been my issue because getting dates is not a problem. Having men want to marry me is not a problem. It's me who'd be like, uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> Having folks who want to go deep with me, again, is not a problem. But for me, because I have been going through so many transitions over and over and over, for the past number of years, I told Danny, I can't think if the money not right. And she's like, well, that's a very masculine trait. And I was mm -hmm. like, girl, you know, you're right. You are right. Mm -hmm. And so it brought me back to the, okay, that longing is, is because I don't allow that to be the case. Danny allows that to be the case. So if I can position myself to where I'm allowing it, then things can shift for me. Y'all see how we just went through the whole asking yourself why, getting super clear, and then being willing to have conversations with your friend because it is still my, she's still my friend first. Before she's a business partner, she is my friend. Okay, cool. Now she can help me to identify without even knowing she did it. Because y'all, this is her first time hearing this story too. <laughs> yeah. Without <laughs> even knowing that she did it, it was, ah, so this is the reason that I have been having a bit of a challenge because of my thought processes. Kind of like with the suitcase where, oh, no, girl, don't worry. You can just handle it because I did everything when I was pregnant. So you can, too. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but if you switch your expectation and make it so that that is not even the case, you are supposed to be taken care of. You're supposed to be provided for switch so that you're operating more in whatever range or feeling or energy that you want to be in. Your results will be different. So I hope y'all got that one. I hope y'all got that one. Yeah. And, and just and then overall, last but not least is don't fuck people over. Like, don't screw people over. Don't do fucked up things to humans. Like, be a decent person. Do the right thing like Spike Lee. Like, you know, try to, like, you know what I mean? Like, I know that sounds so crazy, but it really is that simple sometimes. Like, just don't do mean things. Don't be an asshole. Especially when the money starts coming in. Especially when the money starts. To Especially pay when well. the money starts coming like, in. Like, just think of it. Just think of it as, like, everything you do is an investment. Investments look different. It could be time investment. It could be energy investment. It could be financial investment. 
Again, if it's leading you to the ultimate goal, that should be the focus. Money is nice, but money really only brings out what's already there. So just remember any little red flags you see in somebody, keep those things at the forefront before you go into business with them because all the money will do is bring all that out and make it even bigger, even more, even worse, even better. You know, so thank you guys so much for listening to this. We hope this was good. Um, I, I felt like this conversation is so necessary because there are a lot of um, public fallouts right now um, when it comes to friends and doing business and things like that. And now the narrative is, oh, friends should do business anyways. And that's very, that's a very pervasive um, thought process in the Black community. And I see in other communities that brothers, cousins, friends, college buddies do very successful businesses and stay in business for 50 years together. So I think that's just something we need to rework within ourselves because partnership, because being open, because being, being vulnerable could cost us our life less than 200 years ago. It's very difficult for us sometimes to kind of trust each other and understand that we can do things and we are better together. So I hope that at least this is a different perspective um, compared to the narrative that's out there now about friendship and business. It's possible. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's probably, honestly, I think the best way I don't ever want to do business with someone that I couldn't call a friend. Like your business is, is such a, is, is your baby. Like how I need to be with somebody I can trust for real, you know? So I feel blessed that I luckily have found the friend and the soulmate that I can do business with. And I believe that we all can. It's just how you go about it and being able to be honest with yourself and know that that person is going to hold a mirror up to you and you can't get around it. So, you know, if, if, if you can do that, you can be in business together for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Make sure you stay connected with us everywhere. Do not forget, share this conversation. If it helped you, if it resonated with you, we love to hear from y'all. Share it. You can do so. You can make sure you tag us too when you share it. Tag us at Triggered AFPC. You can also stay connected with me everywhere at Alicia Reese. That's A-L-E-C-H-I-A Reese, R-E-E-S-E. You can go to triggeredaf.com just so that you can, you know, stay abreast with everything we have going on. Check out the latest episodes. You can go to triggeredafevents.com to see what we have cooking up next for our live events because we are coming to a city near you or we need you to come to a city near us. Okay. We want to connect in person because our first event was so awesome. It went so well that we just feel so inspired to keep going because of your support and because of your love for what we're doing. So please go to Trigger Dance Events so that you can be informed about all the things. You can follow me at the Danny Bordeaux, Danny, D-A-N-I, Bordeaux, B-O-U-R-D-E-A-U. Thank you so much for listening. Share, share, share with your friend, with your mama, with everybody so that they can, you know, have a different perspective and what it means to be in business with your friends. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.